Hello, and welcome to the inaugural episode of the Farm RPG Podcast. I'm your host, Belogan. In this episode, we have a staff spotlight with Augie. We continue that with a discussion about item mastery. And we follow up in a conversation with Code Ranger about the stake market and how to optimize your winnings there. Hope you enjoy. With me today, I have a very special guest and co-host, the most power-hungry librarian I have ever worked with, Augie. Hello, I've arrived. Now, I've never asked, am I saying that right, Augie, or did I cement that in stone when I, no, when I started? A... No, you, you said it right. Most people don't. I get uh, Augie, Aubrey, Aggie. I started actually naming my pets after the typos I've seen of my name. Um, I don't quite have enough to fill all of my pets, but am I halfway there? Getting close, yeah. Well, you can always come up with a more strange username. Like, I, I can tell you how many odd ways I've heard to say Belogan, whether it's Belogan, Bell, Logan, Baloney, Belogna. I like Baloney. Logan. I like Baloney. I mean, I just say Bell because I, when I first started, and even honestly still now, like trying to type it on my first go, uh, it, it ain't always go well. But my auto, like my suggestions have kind of figured out what I'm trying to spell and they kind of, they kind of come in clutch for that. But yeah, perk or the bell works. Perk tier list by Bell again. It's a lot. That's a the, <laughs> listen. It takes like five minutes to type out. Right, and you didn't have the uh, the quick links net in the in the past to uh, copy and paste that in for library pages. I know. Now I have a quick link to quick link. That's pretty snazzy. I feel like I've quick linked like I've quick linked most things. Not everything yet, but I'm getting there. Most common questions you've got on macro to answer. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's three letters. All right. Well, let's dig into our staff spotlight. Obviously, that's going to be Augie for this episode. So we have a list of questions that we are going to ask and get some juicy answers to, hopefully. Only if it's uh, orange juice, though. Orange juice, no grape juice. No grape. I don't. Cider. Listen, listen, the New Year's event already passed. No more grape juice, please. <laughs> All right. Awesome. So our first question is, how did you learn about Farm RPG and how long have you been playing? Um, so I've all, I mean, for a long time, I've been like a, I hate the word mobile gamer. I like to play games on my phone because I can just lay in bed and play games on my phone and not have to sit up or anything. And it's really easy. Mm -hmm. so I was actually playing Melvore Idol and I enjoy, I really liked it with all the updates. Now I, I don't even know what's going on. It's a really cool game, but I would always just scroll through the app store to see, you know, what games are recommended for me? I like a lot of single player, not difficult games. And Farm RPG actually just popped up as like the indie, I don't remember what it said, indie spotlight something. So I downloaded it. I didn't even know there was a dark mode until like two weeks later. Uh, <laughs> and I didn't know about chat for a while either. And then I figured out there was a chat. And then your life changed, right? And I, I've been around since like, yeah, I've been around since like June something. Really, my life changed when I discovered dark mode. That's what kept me like, that's what kind of stuck me around was dark mode. That's funny that that's the most important feature that you found it was really, dark mode. It really is though. Like, what other games have that just naturally? None that I can think of. I'm sure others do, but I don't know about them. Yeah, I'm, I can't think of one. But like light mode, hurt, it hurts my eyes. Like, you know, other people, like mm -hmm. people get so tight about light mode versus dark mode. I don't care, but it hurts my eyes. So I'm going to use dark mode and I'm going to have someone that uses light mode check the library pages to make sure that they're not blinded because I'm not going to look. Right. <laughs> I'm not going to do it. I feel, I feel the same way. Yeah. I don't want to change that mode. Keep it, keep it in dark mode for me too. Well, I know like there's some people that um, that play an alpha that keep light mode on their alpha account and dark mode on their regular so they know which one they're on, which is interesting. Yes, that makes sense. I guess. I, I wouldn't do it, though. Not me. All right. Well, if you had one sentence and only one sentence to describe what Farm RPG actually is, what would that sentence be? Um, I would probably describe it as... Going to going to like a video game convention where like a virtual video game convention where like 
every game is the same and they're all single player and all you can do is talk to these other people but it's you're you're only playing yourself like it's i can also describe it like like going to walmart i guess this is like a really tough one you're gonna have to edit some of this out no (laughs) (laughs) one sentence augie come on you can do it I see. And like, I was thinking about this question yesterday and I had like a solid answer and it just totally, I went to sleep and I woke up and it's gone. It was gone. Maybe I just dreamt that I had a solid answer. No, it's like a, I really love the fact that it's a single player game with the chaos of the chats and the ability to, to send other people stuff. Only certain stuff though. All right. I think if you were to massage that enough, you could probably get into one sentence with a few commas in there. So that works. It's a single player game with a Twitch chat. There we go. That's a good description. I mean, it is. I always, I always, and uh, Titan Conquest the same way, Destiny RPG, I always just said it's a glorified chat room with some game attached to it. Yeah. I mean, but I, I love the, like, I love the game and like, I don't love how clicky things are sometimes, but like I love just getting to chat with like the regulars who hang out in their individual chats. Like some people don't leave global. Some people bless their hearts. Don't leave help chat. Some people stay in spoilers. Some people live in trade. Well, now we have giveaway chat too, but it's just like, it's really cool that like there's all these people like from all over the world that play. Like that's insane to me. Like you're in Australia playing the same game as me, and we're we're sitting here talking about, I don't know, the drop rate of carbon spheres. Yep, that community certainly keeps a lot of people around. Yes. So the next question we have is, where did your farm RPG username come from? Um, well, it is what people call me in real life. So, and it wasn't taken. Most place, like most times that I have to make a username. Like, I usually have to go with, like, Augie 1. Mm-hmm. And I always assume I'm going to have to do that. But I always try. And I guess, like, because, I mean, it was it was June. It was, like, a like a little over a month after, like, the actual launch. So not enough people were around. And so I was fortunate enough to get the, uh, the OG Augie. No, 0169 or whatever attached, yep. But I'll lower it. Yeah, I mean, my uh, one of my usernames is like Augie LMAO. I don't remember which one. It's something I don't use, but yeah, it me. Awesome. That's that's cool. You can use your, your real name. You don't have to remember a, a separate one. I sure don't. I have people. Because I, sh- I sure won't. It's always odd when I, when I meet people because I travel a lot for work. And so sometimes I'll meet with people that I game with online. It's like, okay, do we call each other by our real names when we're out here with, with dinner, with family or whatever? Or do we go with our game names? <laughs> what do yeah. we do? Well, I feel like like for someone like like FFFF, I don't even know what to call him. Did we just do that in sync? Apparently. <laughs> hey, f- how are you? All right. Yeah, he's, a, he's an interesting one. So this next question is actually a test. There is a right answer. And that is, besides Farm RPG, what games do you like to play? Um... Other mobile games, I like to play, like, let's see. I've been playing Lost Fall with some of the other staff and uh, a couple of other random players. Mm -hmm. Um, It's like a check-in twice a day, you know, explore, get resources, build your characters. It's, like, kind of competitive, but it's also kind of low-key. You can't can't grind in the game, and I like that. Um, What games do I have on my phone? Solitaire, Sudoku. I don't say that game right, and I know that. Random like word puzzle games. Um, I just finished playing through Uncharted for the first time. I like the Lego games. I like I like like single player exploration games that have an easy mode. Because mm-hmm. I like to explore and scrounge, and I like a good story, but I don't like. I don't like to get uh, absolutely massacred every four seconds either. Right. Yeah. Like Horizon Zero Dawn, really fun for me. 
and I'm hyped for the the second one. That com- I think it comes out this week. I'll have to remember to go pick it up. I have it pre-ordered. Are there any non-electronic type games that you like to play? Um, I like to play like card game, like random card games. So, there's some board games that are really fun. Betrayal on Betrayal at the House on the Hill. I think is the full name of it. Mm-hmm. I don't have enough friends in this area where I currently live to actually play it. But before we moved, we had like a big friend group that liked board games. So we played that a lot. Uh, my boyfriend and I play Flux and I win almost every single time. And I feel really bad about it. So we don't play it that much anymore. Just so you know, you failed the test. When we ask what other games you like to play, the answer is what? There's other games? No, there's not. I mean... It's, it's the only game. I mean, is it a game or is it a lifestyle? That's a good point. Fair enough. All right. Any other interesting facts that you can share about yourself? Um, I'm kind of like, I feel like I'm not that interesting of a person. I can ramble a lot, but overall, I mean, I go to work, come home. I meme on chat, work on my item masteries. Sometimes I watch a movie, but I mean, at least for work, I mean, I think some people already know this because I talk about it sometimes, but I work with, I work at a middle school. And I work in some programs that work with kids that have some sort of social skill deficit, um, like whether it be autism, um, an emotional disorder, learning disorders. Um, and we do a lot of like behavior intervention, which kind of comes in clutch sometimes when I'm moderating chat. But I mean, that's about it. I collect Funko Pops. Awesome. I have a lot of Funko Pops. Well, I have a lot of admiration for people that deal with special needs and and, uh, students that have um, social disorders with uh, the way that my kids have treated the school system. Mm, I need a raise is what I need. Yeah, I agree with that. All right. Last thing. What else would you like to share about yourself that you would like the farm RPG community to know? Didn't we just ask answer that? No, it was a very different question. An interesting fact about yourself. And then what do you want the farm RPG community to know? Oh. For example, I'm not really mean or something of that nature. I mean, I don't think I'm mean. I try really hard not to be mean. Like, if someone's just being an idiot, I'm going to tell them they're being an idiot and they need to stop. I'm like, I, I feel like I'm very straight up about my position on what people are doing. I don't skirt around it. And I feel like that sometimes can be seen as, oh, Augie's a jerk. But, like, I just want to chill. And if you're not chill or you're impeding my ability to be chill, I'm going to tell you that you need to stop. That's about it. Like, like, like it's like it, for me, it it is never that deep ever. And like, I I get, I get so many. (laughs) Just get to go on the record here and say you, along with some of our newer staff have been far more patient and lenient with people than, than I was when I was one of the primary moderators. I tend to squash and hit with the hard hammer very early. So I don't have to put up with anything <laughs> and then we'll back it off after we've had a discussion what's going on. It seems like we've had a, a lot of patience with some of our, our special citizens in the farm RPG community. The problem children. Yes. When I was still like a relatively new player and I found, I found some runestone. It might've been one, like runestone 14. I got really excited in the global chat and I, in all caps said, yes, I got my runestone. And you just swung in out of nowhere. <laughs> Terrified me. Watch the caps, right? <laughs> well, and I was like, oh my God, what did I do? And then, you know, because I mean, you are expected to read through the code of conduct. You are expected to because you agree to it. But I was guilty of just kind of skimming and never again. But I mean, before, now it's like it pops up. So you have to like, you have to scroll to the bottom and do the thing. But uh, I never made that mistake again. See, it worked. You got to be a little bit mean sometimes. <laughs> it didn't work. I don't even think you were mean. I think you just said, watch the caps. Watch the caps, please, probably, or something like that. Yeah, that sounds like me. Yeah. All right, awesome. Well, thank you for sharing with our staff spotlight for this episode. What is item mastery? Item mastery is just, it's, most items in the game that you can get from either fishing, crafting, or ex- certain exploring items, most of the exploring items would be items that you can craft as well. Um, 
And it's just a cool little stat that you have that gives you also rewards for getting different amounts up to 100,000 right now. So item mastery is at 10,000 and grand mastery is at 100,000. I've been pushing to get like a, a 1 million item tier. I don't know if that'll happen, but I think it would be cool. Um, but yeah, no, it's it's a lot of fun to strategize. And like, I know it's mostly for late game players. And I know like there's quite a few players that I chat with about it. Uh, you know, we kind of help each other out. We tease each other. I remember like before I, before I hit 100, um, Wade would always tease me about it. Like, when are you going to hit 100 Masteries? And then I passed him. I passed him for like two days. It was awesome. <laughs> and then, you know, he's, he's now he's ahead of me again. But I currently have 146 items mastered and 28 items Grand Mastered. And Grand Mastery, they're slacking because I'm trying to get to 150 Mastered first. I'm getting there. Now you're now you're dating when we're recording this thing. How many you have? So we'll go look it up in the uh, future. Yeah, it's uh, it will be hopefully bigger. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm I'm getting there. I mean, it's February 13th, so. So we talked about the different tiers of kind of getting up to where you master at having 10,000 of an item, and then grandmaster 100,000. What are the rewards for getting those different tiers? Um, so at the 10,000 item mark, you get a skill point which can be used for um, those skill point perks. Super helpful. Um, you, the items also sell for 10% more silver. The Grand Mastery is 20% more silver, and I think it also gives gold, if I'm not mistaken. I should know this. Mm -hmm. I should, should know, know this. this. I should. You're our expert on item mastery. I know, but like, I just, I, I don't even, I'm going to go and check my own library page. That's what I'm going to do. There we go. We can edit out the, the looking up the library page. Yeah. So at 10,000 items mastered, um, or at 10,000 items crafted, you get five gold, a perk point, um, that, that sell percentage. Um, you get a million silver and there's a stat on your profile near the bottom that, you know, other players can see for how many items you've mastered. And so that number will increase as you get more masteries. For Grand Masteries, you get 25 gold, an additional 10% sell price, so in total it will be 20% extra, 250 million silver, and there's also a Grand Mastery stat on your profile. Yeah, so there's some pretty pretty fun rewards. I personally love the, the skill perk points until you can get everything you want unlocked. Yeah, not to, um, not to take credit for that, but it was my idea. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just say the things I can take credit for in the game probably aren't positive. That's another story for another time. So as back to back to item mastery, as a, a new player coming in or an early game player, when when should you really start looking at item mastery and making that something that you focus on? I would say don't focus on it until you're probably like le like level seventy or higher as your focus, because at level seventy. Currently, that is the highest, you know, exploration and fishing levels. Um, ideally, you know, when you when you hit all 99s, that's going to be the main time that you're going to probably want to crunch down on it or when you're close to the all 99s. Mm -hmm. But I mean, before that, there's a lot of other things, you know, getting, working on silver, working on, you know, quests. I mean, because there, there are a few quests for 99s, but... I mean, like item mastery, you need you need a large inventory, so you want to upgrade your storehouse. Maybe spend some gold and upgrade your inventory that way too. Um, but you know, having a large orchard is also you know kind of necessary for that. Um, my orchard is still not completely maxed out because my inventory will void it. I'm getting there though. Probably like another couple weeks. Um, but yeah, I would say don't even really look at it until you're level 70. The lower tiers, um, do reward silver. So the things that are easy for you to come by, um, and some will just come naturally as well, like, like wood or boards, twine, um, stuff like that. Those will just happen. If you happen to just notice that something is close and you want to, you know, bang it out, Go for it, but it shouldn't really be a priority until you're later in the game, I think. 
All right, well, awesome. Do you have any tips to help players who are at the point where they can really start focusing on item mastery? What's what's a, a way to well, what tips do you have for those players? Um, I would say what I did was I like mentally grouped things together. Some people write it down, um, like things that you can work on at the same time, um, or things that are going to be easy and things that are going to be difficult. I think I was, I was probably the first, if not one of the first players to, to master all three diaries. Um, and you know, now like a whole ton of people have, so it's, you know, less cool, but it, it was my current flex at that time. Um, but it was, I don't have any of those mastered yet. No diaries for me. Even, are you even a real gamer? Do you even play the game? Probably not. <sighs> it's disappointing. No, but, um, if you want to do item mastery, you need to utilize the trade chat. Like you just, you need to, there's, unless you're going to, you know, drive yourself crazy on purpose because, you know, a lot of, a lot of items need materials that are from more than one location. And, you know, somebody that is, you know, exploring for green dye, they're going to have a lot of feathers and, you know, if you're working on, I don't know, bottle rockets, you're going to need coal and you're going to need feathers. So if you're winding up with a lot of coal, you can offer up your coal for trade chat because you're going to have more than you need and somebody can give you feathers. And, you know, it's kind of a, and that's kind of, I think I said earlier, you know, a lot of like the really like heavy hitting, like item mastery players, you know kind of like work together we help each other out you know if someone's like i'm really struggling to get this one done we'll help them out we'll also tease them a little bit but you know that's kind of the fee um i'm trying to think of anything else um as far as fishing masteries go for the easy ones and then just move on to the next area like there are fish that I do not have mastered yet. Um, and it's like mussels from small island, catfish. Hate catfish. Mm -hmm. I hate catfish so much. Yep. <laughs> um Just some of the the rare low level fish. Yeah. Catfish and flyers are the two low level fish, and then there's mussels, octopus, and giant squid. Um eventually I'll get there on the the ones that are not catfish and flyers. Uh, and then there are the, the goldfish that are manual fishing only. Um, I have a feeling I ain't going to see those anytime soon. I don't even have manual fishing super rare yet because I just, I don't manual fish. I have too much other stuff to do. <laughs> it's a race. What we get first, mastery of gold and trout or level 99 chicken? What, are, what level are my chickens? I'm going to go check. Let me go to my farm. My chicken little is level 15. That's my oldest one. Mine are 13. This is my, my lowest is level 11 and my highest is 13. They're like halfway to 14. They're getting there. Yeah. I'm not going to gripe about their progress slowing down in some uh, stealth nerf a couple months ago that we don't know what happened. But Yeah, I saw, I saw you, you guys talking about that and I was like, I genuinely had no idea that people actually looked at that. Like, like actually... I just, you know, pet chickens. Okay, I'm done with it. <laughs> and then they move on, yeah. Like, I don't even really, I don't, I don't even really look at their, their levels. And same thing for cows. I, I only really check my cow levels when the market goes, you know, risky or wild. And I just kind of roll with whatever it says. All right. Well, those are some great item mastery tips. Definitely ones that uh, were new for me. Didn't even really think about. Um, I probably did this exact opposite way of, of how you did, which is why you're so much better at it than I am. I like pick one thing and do it only and everything else I get, I just sell. Like, well, I mean, I, I mean, I, I kind of do that. It just, I mean, it depends on the item. Like it really, really does. Like for any, pretty much any of the rings, you know, say, you know, say like emerald rings, I'm going to mm -hmm. have coal and I'm going to have, glass and i'm gonna have carbon spears so i can work on something that needs steel 
and I can work on something that has that uses um, coal or black powder, but those emerald rings are going to be my main concern. Mm-hmm. And you know, so I could probably just trade some of that other stuff for mushroom paste, so I don't have to leave that area that I'm exploring in. But also, chests uh, make a huge difference now as well with the rings and with the gems. We all love our brown bear. Some might have even been known to sing songs about him. Hmm. Who might that be? I don't know. Some wacko. <laughs> <laughs> I I am a big fan of the bells bops. That I I named bells bops because that's what they are. That is that is your nomenclature. Yep. I should trademark that. Let's dig into another mechanical deep dive, and this time let's talk about the stake market and how that works. So there are two types of commodities in the stake market. We've got stakes and we've got kebabs. So let's have you break down stakes and kebabs for us a little bit, and how do we how do we play that market and how do we win? Yeah. Okay. So so stakes are the the more complicated and more interesting one. Stakes stakes average uh, fifty thousand silver each. Uh, but they they randomize every day. So at, at game rollover, uh, midnight server time, it's going to pick a new stake price. The range that it picks from is based on the market level. So there's there's a there's a sort of there's the stable, unstable, risky, and wild um, market levels, uh, and those go through a pattern over time. So it it always goes stable to unstable to risky to wild to risky to unstable back to stable. So sort of like you know an up and down kind of sine wave. Mm. The timings on those, uh, it's about 10 days in stable and then about 3.7 days. It's either three or four most of the time in each of the other stages up and down. Um, it comes out to about a 28-day cycle. It's a little little more, 28 and a half days. From that, uh, the level determines the range of randomization. Stable is plus or minus 1,000, so it'll be anywhere from 49,000 to 51,000 plus or minus 1,000 from the middle. Unstable is 2,500, so plus or minus 2,500 either direction. Risky is plus or minus 10,000, and wild is plus or minus 25,000. So a wild market, the price could be anywhere from 25,000 to 75,000. Um, and it just picks on a flat distribution in there, anything is equally likely. Once it picks the price, then you can buy or sell them once the stake market unlocks. It, uh, it it stays unavailable right around reset. That's the thing. I don't know if I've, I've heard about that in, in uh, any of your, your previous videos. A lot of people ask questions about that. The stake market is unavailable for about two minutes before and two minutes after game rollover. Um, so right around midnight, you cannot sell right then. It's fine. The game isn't broken. It's just that's how the code works so that no one can cheat the stake market and like slip something in in a weird time frame. So that's stakes. Uh, they change once a day. It's it's sort of like the stock market, hence the, the jokey name. Buy low, sell high. Hopefully you make some profit on the arbitrage. Um, or in the case of cows, you, you get them, quote, for free, and then you sell them for whatever price you get. Kebabs work similarly, but a lot simpler. Um, they change once an hour instead, and there's no level for them. They instead just have two modes. Um, most of the time they are between, they pick a random value um, between plus or plus or minus 500 from 10,000. So 10,000 is their, their sort of average price and it's plus or minus 500 from there. So from 9,500 to 10,500, there's a rare, I believe it's about one in 25 or one in 30 chance of hitting the, the a high range, in which case, instead of picking from that normal range, it picks between 10,500 and 12,500. But within each range, it's a flat distribution, as far as I can tell. Overall, same idea. Um, you do get steak kebabs every day from Raptors. So those sort of give you a, a baseline income that you'll want to sell each day. And then other than that, same idea, buy low, sell high. All right, cool. So then the question is, when when should we buy and sell? Exactly. That's exactly where we're going. Do you only ever just stick to if it's above a price I sell, if it's a below a price I sell, or do we look for these trends where you think it's going to go up or down a certain number of days? Other than the the market level, which follows a predictable cycle and has some level of predictability, the individual price selections are completely random as as far as I can tell. Mm-hmm. So I don't I don't think there's any patterns to be divined there other than knowing that like when the market is stable, it will never be higher than 51,000. That's just, it, it cannot go higher than that. Um, so if you want to get a very high price, it must be during a, an unstable or, or higher market. Mm-hmm. 
But whether or not you get a high price, that's, as far as I can tell, completely random. So I've done a whole bunch of, of simulations on various, you know, little little algorithms for buying and selling them. Um, and as best I can tell, they all basically do exactly the same as the the, the the recommendation that's on the beef tips page of if it's, you know, for steaks, if it's above 50,000 sell, if it's below 50,000 buy. And similarly for kebabs, if it's below 10,000 buy, if it's above 10,000 sell. Very fancy algorithms. You can sneak out a little bit extra profit sometimes if you're lucky. Uh, but overall, they all do about the same of 800, 850,000 silver per hour. So if you got a gut feeling, even if it's at 1,100 on kebabs, it's going to go up next hour. You're probably safe to not buy more holding, but to, but to stick with it. I mean, yeah, basically. Um, I, I will also, all, all of the simulations, kebabs earn most of the profit, which I didn't expect. I was, I was expecting stakes because stakes can give a much wider price range. Mm -hmm. So you get more from the arbitrage. Uh, but kebabs earn something like 80% of the profit if you're, if you're, you know, these are, these are simulations. So it's, it's checking every hour on the hour in a way that a player probably can't, but still, if you want max profit, kebabs do actually matter more than I thought they would. So another strategy I've heard some players do is they, they really wait until it's, it's uh, unstable and risky and wild and they try to buy at the super low prices. So they'll only buy below 30 K and they'll only sell above like, you know, 60 or 70 K um, in the long run. Is that potentially more profitable than every day changing them or, or is it still best just to stick with the, the conventional wisdom we've recommended? Let's see. Uh, so you want, you want 60 or do you want 70 for the, uh, the sell threshold? I can, I can run you a simulation. Yeah, let's go, let's go below 30 and above 70 just so we're, we're 20 K right. off of the, the 50 K meeting. All right. Uh, for that. All right. So I'm going to run, this is assuming that you have 2000 inventory slots. Um, I'm going to run a simulation over 10 years. Uh, let's see how it does. Over 10 years, it made 2 billion in profit from 30,000 and 70,000. So I think 70,000 is probably a little too high. Mm -hmm. uh, if we try it again, if we try 30 and 60 instead, let's see how that does. That made 2.6 billion over 10 years. But still, that's that's two point six billion over ten years of playing the game. Like we're not talking about very much silver here. Yeah, we're not for your your uh, end game players. Two billion silver is like two days of passive income sometimes. <laughs> yeah, so you know, honestly, do do what you want. The, the, the like the difference. The, it's not it's not a big actual difference. Play however uh, makes you happy. So a fun tidbit on steak market before there were kebabs. Initially, the first couple of days of steak's price were tracking Bitcoin. Ah. That was the, the values that they were using. So Firestream claimed that there were some external elements that control it as well as his own algorithm. I don't know how much it sticks to to that, but that was our initial observation is, oh, this is tracking Bitcoin. So we kind of knew <laughs> which way it was going to go those first couple of days. Uh, well... Maybe maybe there's something in there, uh, but from just doing some like basic regressions, uh, it looks like they're they're random, just random around the averages. Yeah, I think so. I think so at this point. All right. Well, thanks for that deep dive on the stake market. That was fun to hear about, and definitely uh, some modeling and things that, that I never dug into that much. Looking at it, we just kind of figured the average and said, "Here's your conventional wisdom, easy path. Don't think about it too hard." Sometimes the first answer is the right answer. I love that. <laughs>